Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to show you how to set up the Corsair A115 air tower cooler in either an AMD AM5 system or an LGA1700 socket setup with an Intel motherboard. And I'll leave timestamps down below so that you can jump to the relevant spots. But stick with me first because I want to show you some important things to bear in mind before you buy this tower cooler or before you set it up in your case because there are some important caveats to it. For example, it will work with two fans, but this can be problematic if you have large RGB RAM like this Corsair Vengeance RAM, where if you try and seat the cooler down on the CPU, you'll see that it won't go down there properly because the RAM's too tall. Now you can either slide the fan up a little bit in its bracketing system, or you can take it off and then we can swap it around and put it on the other side of the tower. And that's the advantage of this setup is it is bracketed, so it's possible to do this fairly easily with some little caveats and things to bear in mind, which I'll show you as we get into it. However, you might also have problems mounting it on the other side because the VRM on this motherboard, for example, on this MSI board is a bit tall and therefore the fan won't fully seat all the way down. Now, it is important to note that this is fine theoretically, although it will block the RGB lighting on there, but you can see that it still does have good contact with the cooler and should allow for good airflow there. And indeed, you can still secure it to the motherboard with relative ease. But one problem here is that it does jut out a little bit far. And so when you try and put the glass back on, you might not be able to close your case. Now, this is going to vary from case to case, as is the RAM. So it's worth checking the specs of the cooler and the size your case can take in terms of the total height of the CPU cooler because it might be possible to put it in a larger case, for example, like that without any problems. But I've also just abandoned that and gone back to one fan in the setup. So I want to show you the process for doing that and the things to think about along the way. I'm going to start by unboxing and showing you what's included in here, and then we're going to go into the AM5 setup. But if you look at the box yourself, you'll see all the different specs and dimensions of it, so you can get an idea of that. Look at that and then look at your RAM and your case so you can get an idea of the clearance possibilities there. If you've got low profile RAM, it's not going to be a problem. And if you've got a massive case, it might not be an issue, but it is still worth keeping in mind, I think, before you start building. You don't want to build the thing and then find it won't fit. So it's worth testing these things or at least looking at the specs beforehand. So this tower cooler comes with everything you need in the box to get started. It has pre-applied thermal paste, which is important to note. And also, as you've seen, you've got two fans included with the option potentially to put a third one on if you can get the right accessories from Corsair. Whether it will even fit, though, I don't know. I wasn't able to test that, obviously, as you can see from the standard setup. So out of the box, you'll find the cooler comes with the single fan in the middle sort of pre-installed in there, and it's already in there. But we need to take it out in order to mount it onto your motherboard. Now, I will say don't take it out immediately because you do need to sort of pay attention to which way around it's facing and you don't want to confuse yourself at this point. So I'll show you in a second what I mean. You'll see on the block at the bottom here that you have thermal paste pre-applied. Don't take that plastic cover off. I'm just showing you where it is, but don't take that off until you're ready to install because you don't want to damage that thermal paste and then ruin the conductivity setup here because that would be bad news for your system. So put that cover back on or don't take it off in the first place, more importantly. And then we're going to go into setting this up. So the good thing about this system is the fans are just easily bracketed in there. So you can just slide them out when you need to. But you can see we have the Corsair logo across there. And that's important to pay attention to. Now, also included in the case is another fan. So these are both AF140 Elite fans designed to give good airflow and to run at just up to 1,600 RPM. So it should run nice and quiet. In the box, you'll also find multiple packets of various different things, including Intel retention brackets, AMD retention brackets, fan clips for the spare fan, thumb screws for either AMD or Intel. It's the same screws for both and other parts. So I want to quickly show you how to set up the extra fan if you want to put it on and talk about the process for doing that. Ideally, we want to mount it on the right hand side that you can see here so that it's an intake fan. So it's pulling air from the front of your case through the first part of the radiator and then the other fans helping with that. But if you look, you can try and work out the where the logo is going to get because what we want to do is match up the Corsair logo with the fan that's already on there. So that will make sure they're facing in the same direction, which is important. Now, you can mount them on either side of the radiator, as I said, and as I'll show you. 
But you do need to make sure, whichever way around you do, that you mount them both facing the same way because you don't want them fighting each other in terms of airflow. So they both need to make sure they're pulling air in the same direction through and cooling those fins down because obviously the heat's going to go through the radiator and into the fins on it and you don't want to interrupt that airflow and cause problems there. Now the middle fan will slide out and that's already obviously set up the right way in the direction that it should be facing so pay attention to that and then you can see if you slide it up you'll see which direction it's in so if you're having trouble working out what you're going to do with the extra fan that's a good way to do it just slide it out so you can see but you'll also see obviously we've got the Corsair logo down here and then you'll see the AF Elite marking on the fan as well as well as the Corsair logo on the side of the fan so that'll give you an idea of the right direction it's important to pay attention to this sort of thing because you don't want to put the fan brackets on on the wrong way so I'm then going to take that fan out because there are other things to bear in mind here so there are markings on the fan bracketing and on the radiator itself which I found a bit confusing so I think it's worth pointing it out so if we pull that fan out you will see on the brackets there's L and R marked on them so left and right and there's similar markings on the radiator itself as well and you'll see that actually it lines up with right to left and left to right depending on which part you're looking at which is confusing because you think they'd match up but there you go so just pay attention to that when you're doing it and that will hopefully make life a little bit easier you can't put it in the wrong way around and there is a little notch at the top of the bracketing which ensures that it sort of clips into place once it's in i also did find that it's quite fiddly to get down this run along the side i found that i had to work this sort of pulling it around a bit in order to get that down there so you might find it's a little bit fiddly so don't panic if it is it's just a bit of an issue there at least it was for me hopefully you'll find it easier so obviously as i said we've got to try and make sure the fans are lined up in the same direction so take the middle fan out then put your other fan next to it and then work out basically the logic for it because we're going to put the bracketing on the same way so we're basically mirroring what's on the other fan and then we'll be setting it up so here obviously is the extra brackets that are included and we just put them onto the fan and then use the pre-included screws to screw them into place and secure them in each of the corners. You obviously need to make sure you don't do this the wrong way around or upside down because you don't want the cable poking out the top of the fan when it's on the radiator and equally you don't want them in the wrong direction too. So we're just screwing those screws in and securing it. Obviously I'm speeding up some of these steps and it takes a little bit of time. Obviously if you're going to mount the fan on the other side, we'll get to in a little while, then you'd want to put the brackets on the other side and I'll show you that in a minute because depending on whether you've got problems with your RAM for example or not, you may want to put the bracket on the other side and alternatively you could get an extra fan and then apply that logic too. So now we've got that extra additional fan set up and that's ready to go as well. And then the same sort of logic with the other fan. So you can just put them back. But here you can see them side by side. They're basically identical now, which is the way we want it. So just pay attention to the Corsair logos on the side of the fan and obviously the front of the fan as well. And then when we're putting those back onto the radiator, just make sure they're facing the same way. So obviously you'd replace that one into the middle. Now, you probably don't want to do this just yet because you are going to be getting access to some screws to actually secure it to the motherboard. So just bear that in mind that you actually need to remove the middle one to secure it to the motherboard. But you can seat the outer one on. And if you do, that will then help if you're considering whether it's actually going to fit with your RAM in the first place. So you could do some test fitting there. And then obviously you can take it off if necessary. So, for example, as you'll see at the end, I actually didn't have to use the fan. But what you can't do is you can't take it off and then just put it on the other side because the bracketing is wrong and then the fans obviously be facing in different directions so they'll be fighting each other. We want air to come through from the front, pass through and then come out the back. If we put them this way, they'll be really just blowing together. So it'll be confusing. So we'll start off with the AMD AM5 setup. This is a X670 motherboard from Gigabyte. And what you need to do initially is to remove the standard bracketing so you can see that there's two clips held in place with four screws on this motherboard and it should be the same across most AM5 motherboards. We'll pop those off and out of the way and then look for the AMD retention kit in the box. So you're going to then take that out and there are some standoffs and some clip inside here which you can then use to secure that stuff and get it ready. So we're doing motherboard prep right now. Assuming you've installed your CPU already, as I have, as you can see here, 
and then we're going to set these up. So you can see the little standoffs. What you want to do is screw the smaller bit into the parts of the motherboard, so the little holes there and the screw holes. Screw those down so that the taller bit sits up off the motherboard because that's where you're going to then seat your bracketing for the actual cooler itself. So secure them in each four corners nice and tight and make sure they're tightened up so that they're not loose in any way. And then we're going to get the bracketing out and secure that down on top. Now there's thumb screws for this bracketing, which is the same for Intel. So there's only one set of thumb screws included. Obviously you only need one, but just so you know, that's separate from that AMD retention kit that you've seen. Then you've got to put the bracket down like this on the top so you can see it looks like a bit of a smiley face. And you'll notice there's holes on there to line up. That's because that will work with AM4 as well and other AMD setups. Obviously, this is AM5. So you just need to line up the holes as I have done here and make the standoffs come through the holes in that way. So you can see that you had to do the edges there. It's actually impossible to get it wrong because of the way it's set up you can't put them in wrong so they can set it up and put it in like that and then we just got to put the thumb screws on so again we're securing the bracketing down by using these thumb screws on all four of those standoffs that we put in there initially use your fingers to put them on and then i'd recommend using a screwdriver just to make sure they're fully tight so this system isn't loose at all because you don't want that moving around next stage is obviously to install the cooler and make sure it's facing the right way. So that front fan on the front, we need to take that fan out, as I've mentioned already, so remove that fan so you can access the screws, which are then seat down over the top of the bracketing system. Don't forget to take the plastic cover off so that the thermal paste can make contact with the CPU, obviously. If you keep that plastic cover in place, that's gonna be a problem and then seat this down there. Now, one thing that I did find was an issue here is you do need a long screwdriver in order to be able to access these screws between the two rad parts of the tower. So it's a little bit fiddly to do. But if you happen to have a long, thin screwdriver, then you can get access into both of those. And then you just need to secure the screws and keep screwing those two screws essentially until they won't tighten anymore. So you should find it's pretty easy to work out when it is because you just it'll come to a stop and don't try and over tighten it there but that should be nice and secure there and just do both of them and then that's ready and then you can replace that middle fan back into its bracketing now that we've secured it and you can seat that back down and then obviously the next stage is to make sure that the fan cables are plugged in so you've now got two fan cables coming out of there that you can see here and they're going to connect up to the motherboard so i'm just quickly showing you how to do that so you can see it a bit easier without the rad in the way there's a Y splitter cable included in the box, which will take both those fan cables and put them into a single connection. So you use that cable and then plug both of these in and then the single connector will go to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. Now, obviously, if you're only using one fan, then you just connect one fan to that CPU header. But if you're using both, you'd need this Y splitter. So usually your CPU fan header is in the top right of the motherboard. You can see it here, it's gray and it's marked CPU fan and you just connect that up and then that will allow your motherboard to control the speed of the fans on the system. Now we're moving over to Intel LGA 1700 with an i9-13900K on an MSI motherboard and the setup is fairly similar although obviously a separate packet with the Intel bracketing in it. So we have various different things in here. It's a little bit more complicated because you need an Intel backplate on this and we have Intel LJ 1700 standoffs. There are other standoffs included for other Intel setups, and you've got the Intel clip and the Intel backplate as well, and then we use the thumb screws, which are also included that will work with any of the options. So there's a backplate that you need to put on the back of your motherboard and adjust it so it fits the four corners of the motherboard standoffs. So on 1700, you have to slide it all the way out to the far corners and then secure it in place and then access the other side to put the standoffs in. Now, what I have found is that these are quite short, so it does fall out of the back of the motherboard. So I actually end up having to hold that in place that I'll show you in a second. And then we have the 1700 standoffs. Now you'll notice there's a rubber bit on one side of these. Pay attention to that, because that's the direction that you want to mount these onto the motherboard so that you're securing them properly. So rubber bit faces downwards into the standoffs we put through the back plate. Now I've got my hand on the back of the motherboard here holding 
the backplate in place. Obviously I'm grounded so there's no problems with static passing through me and damaging the motherboard. So you should make sure you do the same. But this bit is a little bit fiddly doing it like this. But obviously if you've secured one or two you could probably put it back down again and, and then secure all four into the various corners. Then we've got an Intel clip which is a bracketing system that you put in place over those standoffs and then secure that down with the thumb screws. Now this clip will actually work with the different Intel setups. So you'll see there's actually three notches of the holes that will go down over various different standoffs for the various different sockets of motherboard. This can make it a little bit fiddly in order to line it up. But what I did find is it basically sits in the middle of those three holes on the LGA 1700 setup there. And that seems to be the way it goes on. And then you need to use the thumb screws to secure that bracketing down over those standoffs and put it into the four corners. Make sure it's tightened up and I'd recommend using a screwdriver to make sure it's fully seated and secured there so there's no movement in that. And then we just need to secure it down. Now, I mentioned earlier on the problem with the RAM here. So we've got RGB RAM, obviously that's gonna be an issue. So what I'm doing instead is taking the fan off that I put on earlier on, removing that fan, changing the bracketing round and then putting it on the other side. So instead of having an intake fan pulling air through from the front, we're gonna have it help exhaust air out of the rear instead. So it'll be pulling air, it'll be assisting that fan in the middle. But what you need to do is obviously swap the direction of it because the fan needs to face this way instead. So where you can see the Corsair logo and not the back struts is where the air is being pulled through. So the front of it pulls the air through and then exhausts it out of the other side. So we will then need to put the bracketing on this way round instead. So you can see I've got left on the bottom half and right on the top half there and securing that down. Make sure once again that we put the cable in the right direction because you want to basically match the fan that's already installed so that the cable is at the bottom of the rad rather than at the top. So just be careful there. And then we'd seat that down on the left hand side. So obviously we've got the Corsair logo reading from top to bottom in this setup and then the fans are both facing the same way and you can tell that because you've got the AF Elite logo on the top of them and then they're both set up that way and then we'd remove the plastic cover with the thermal paste and then you need to seat this down over the bracketing that we put on the motherboard a minute ago. In order to secure it we need to remove that middle fan, put it down over that bracketing and then secure the mounting parts and you need to make sure you screw those two screws in and you need a long screwdriver thin one preferably I found to get between the gaps and also to be able to reach to tighten it up enough. Obviously we've got to carefully seat that down on top of it and then go about securing it while we hold it in place. And this is a little bit fiddly to do but as you can see another thing of note is the VRM obviously is pushing that fan up but it's still going to hold on to there because of the bracketing system so it's not going to come off or anything and it shouldn't be vibrating because the bracketing is holding it in nice and tight. So it is still possible to secure this you just need to make sure that you screw these in and keep going until you can't do it anymore. And then you should find that it's nice and secured that way. Be careful not to over tighten because you don't want to damage the motherboard or the pins on it. Just make sure you tighten it up enough that it can't notch in any further. And then replace the middle fan back where it was. Obviously you can't put it the wrong way around as long as you didn't take the bracket off. And then it'll seat in there quite nicely. And then you just need to put the cables in so we need to look for the CPU fan connection on the motherboard on the top right and connect it up and we'll use the wire splitter that's included in the case so there's a wire splitter included which will allow you to connect both cables from either fan together into a single port so you can then plug those in with ease into that CPU fan header and that saves having to worry about the two different cables going somewhere else. And it also means you can neaten things up because you can run the cables to the back of the case if you're lucky and tidy things up a little bit. So that's the finished product there as it looks. Now, obviously, this might hurt some people's eyes. They're probably not going to like the fact that the fan's sticking out the top. And that might not be the case for you anyway. It depends on your motherboard, depends on the heart of your RAM and your VRM. So it might not be an issue, but I wanted to test these things out. Obviously, with that secured, we can then mount the motherboard into the case. This is the Lee and Lee Evo RGB, by the way, if you're not aware already, and I'll leave all the specs of the build in the description so you can find out more about it. But we're putting that down over the standoffs and then securing it back. The interesting thing here is you'll note that the rear fan on the back of the case is still there and in place, and it is possible to have a fan on the left side 
of the rad and still have an exhaust fan there as well. So we've actually got three fans essentially helping with the cooling of the CPU there. And I've got six intake fans on here. The other thing as well is this is a 4070 Ti. You can see that doesn't get in the way, so there's no problems there. There's a decent amount of space between the two, so there shouldn't be any issues there. But the issue that I did have, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is that glass won't close because the fan on the left is sticking up too much. And I can't put it on the right for the same reason because the RAM's in the way. So it just doesn't work in either place. So I ended up having to take this fan off and then just go back to having one single fan in there. So you can obviously remove the cabling and then just use that single fan connection to the CPU fan header and that'll set it up. Now it's worth noting I've done separate tests on this that show that even with one fan, it's still able to cool an i9 13900K perfectly well. So don't worry too much if you can't use both. I'll leave that video linked in the description so you can find out more and hopefully you found this useful. If you have, subscribe. And let me know down below what you think. We really appreciate it. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.